if a person lives in an area where hands-on trying the next and higher level of fountain pens at a pen show or a brick and mortar store isn't an option, what recommendations would you have uh, to give, what, what recommendations would you give to help that person take the leap? Um, I get it, you know, this was tough for me when I first started out. I had the advantage of being in the pen business, uh, which not everybody has. Uh, so, you know, basically research, do a lot of online research, ask people in the community, there's Goulet Nation, there's, you know, lots of forums, blogs, those types of things. So you, you can interact on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all these places. Um, you'll get a lot of different answers from people, <laughs> but they'll probably be honest with you. Um, see if there's a local pen meetup or maybe start one, you know, reach out to, to you know, a Fountain Pen Network, Goulet Nation, something like that, and say, hey, I live in the Des Moines area. Does anybody here want to get together and talk about pens? Maybe bring your pens. I want to try some. Cool. Most people are pretty willing to do that in the pen world. So you can do that if you're so inclined, want to get a little social. Um, reading lots of reviews, you know, there's obviously reviews on our site and other places that you can do. Um, you can reach out to people and try like swapping and trading. You might have a pen that somebody else really wants to try and it's like, hey, let's trade for a week and then we'll send it back and that kind of thing. A little bit of coordination there, a little bit of trust, but um, it can be done. Uh, but, you know, obviously a very practical thing would be to reach out to retailers like us. My team is here to answer questions like that on all the social channels as well as phone, email, live chat, all these things. So if you have a question, Yes, you can't try it, but you can get really good personalized feedback from somebody that has handled a lot of these pens um, and can give you some pretty decent um, you know, guidance in terms of what to do. And then of course, if you're shopping at a retailer, you can you know, get um, verify the return policy and, and try to minimize that if you do need to get a return. You know, it's different if it's like, I need to make sure that it flows perfectly with an exact ink that I'm using. Okay, then you're inking up the pen. A lot of retailers will have a restocking fee if you ink it up because you gotta clean it out. You can't sell it as new, these types of things. Um, but if it's a pen and you're just like, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like the vanishing point with that grip, you know, because the clip is on the grip. Like, I, I, that might feel weird to me. Well, you can buy that thing, like from us, for example. It's going to be different every retailer, but you can buy that pen. You can try holding it in your hand. As long as you don't ink it up, you know, and you don't, like, ruin any part of it, you keep all the packaging and everything, you can hold that thing, you know, and, and, and get a pretty good dry run of it uh, and get a good sense of it. And then if you find that it's just not going to work for you, you can send it back and, you know, just for basically the price of shipping. Um, since it's a preferential thing, we'll, we'll give you a full refund on it. So, um, you know, reach out to your retailer, read the terms and conditions and policies and stuff like that of whatever retail you're buying it and see what the, the deal is there. Um, you know, obviously if you like, I really need to make sure that I have a pen that is going to, you know, handle well if I run over it with my car. Well, if you test that and then you go to return it, nah, it's not going to work out so great um, in terms of full refund. But that could be another option for you to consider is looking within the policy and see what it is. Um, but yeah, um, let's see here, uh, you know, and then if, if, if you've done all that stuff and you're still just really unsure, you know, just try the most popular pens because generally speaking, the most popular pens are popular for a reason. They tend to be reliable. People tend to like them a lot. Um, so you can start out kind of with those and expand from there. Um, you know, it's going to be a challenge if you've never seen a pen before you buy them. Um, but that's why we're trying to help you as much in advance as possible. Um, I've thought a lot about like, hey, is there, is there a way, I think about like Warby Parker and other companies like that, that like send out things before you buy them, you pick one after you try it out. It's a little bit different for something like eyeglass frames than it is for a pen because a pen's a functional tool. You'd be surprised the number of people that could potentially ruin it before sending it back if they don't know what they're doing or they just happen to drop it and they're like, whoops, oh well, sorry, I'll just send it back, you know. So there's a lot of that stuff, the logistics that we would have to consider in a, like a try before you buy situation. Haven't been able to quite figure out the logistics of that one yet, but it's on my mind. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Could be something, um, at least if there was an option like that, that would be pretty, that'd be pretty rad. No other retailer that I know has ever tried that either. I think everybody else is kind of in the same boat as me. They're like, yeah, it's a good concept, but I don't know how we would do that profitably. Um, so.